that was called an educated or illiterate. He also was the one who was one of those present in the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus showed up to them. And then the dating, it's pretty much the same as First Peter because they were just written kind of like at the same time. Audience is also the same, Asia Minor. So what are those Asia Minor? Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia. So everything that we have talked about in First Peter. And basically, these are the Gentile believers. And then the purpose though, the main, wow. Where did the color go? <laughs> Okay, so the main purpose of 2 Peter, the letter, is to warn the church against false teachers. Mm -hmm. And that is just one of the main purpose. Okay, and then again, with the contents, I wrote them all down there. And then as we go on, chapter by chapter, we'll have more specific contents to discuss. Okay? For finals, this is what you guys are going to be doing. You're going to have James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, Jude, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John. And then, authorship, dating, audience, purpose, theme, contents. We're going to enumerate all of them? You're going to be filling it up. Wow. Yeah. Of course, we're going to have some spaces that are already covered. Some spaces are empty. So, oh, gee. You'll, you'll be, look, there's only four books, but then with Peter, there's first and second. Uh, with John, there's first, second, and third, and there's not much difference on some of them. I think with that, mostly the, uh, the contents and the purpose, but it's the same author. The dates, not so much far apart. So are you going to give us a copy of that? Mm -hmm. Am I going to give you a copy of this? Yeah. Or are you guys are going to make your own copy from your notes? Oh. Yeah, that's why you guys are making notes. See, you guys want to be spoon fed all the time. <laughs> and that's why you guys are in school. So you have your notebook, your pen, your paper, your books. You guys are, you guys are spoiled. I know Tito Mark, I mean uh, Tito... Dennis is spoiling you guys with the notes. Yeah. Oh, he's no. not. <laughs> it's like a hard one. This is like the <laughs> Okay, so let's get into First Peter. I mean, Second Peter. Let's read. We have what, 20 minutes. Let's read chapter one. But we'll divide it into two sections. Tito Mark, if you could read verses one to eleven. Yep. And then Brother Juan, if you could read 12, verses 12 to 21. Okay. okay. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And then the subheading here is making one's calling and election sure. sure. Verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these He has given us His very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. Verse 5, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if, for if you possess 
these qualities in increasing measure, you will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have that, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. And if you do these things, you will never fall. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There you go. So that's half of the world continuum. So let's look into it. Again, as we go back to the first two verses, those are the salutation part of the letter. And that's how it usually was when they... Um, wrote their letters before. Exactly. I know now yeah, now it's different. You have your emails and it's just hi, good morning. Greetings. But here, yeah. <clears throat> I remember when we used to put um, I hope you're having a wonderful day or greetings to you, my sister, blah 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 blah. I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is just to let you know that you know these are our salutation maybe 10, 20 years ago. But they, way back then they introduced themselves as the writer. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, um, the writer's name or the is in the bottom. And here, it's the first one. And then they uh, mention who they're giving the letter to. And here, Peter is just saying, to those who through righteousness of our God, and this are the believers that he's addressing. Okay, so that's your salutation part. Now, how important is it for us to make our calling and our election sure? Very important. Exactly. It, it's like having your own compass because if you do not have the guidance of where you're going, you could be easily lost. You know, and especially in this particular time when Peter was wrote, writing to these believers that he knows are having these problems inside their churches, that there are false teachers inside the churches, it's really important that each and every one <coughs> knows how to um, ask the Holy Spirit to show them, maybe, to guide them into making their calling and their election sure. Because sometimes you could easily be deceived, you know. Just a minor thing. We have a lot of ladies in the church who would still talk about horoscopes. <laughs> and mind you, they've been in the church for a long time. And these are the things that, you know, sometimes as you and I or whoever knows about the truth, we need to open up our mouths and tell them that, you know, the truth of God needs to be able to <coughs> get that junk out and replace it with the truth of Jesus, that those no longer exist. That you don't have to believe on your daily horoscope, but believe on the promises of God. <laughs> so, okay? And these are just minor things that I'm talking about, because there are bigger things about false teachings that are out there. So. Anyhow, when he said here that through these he has given us every, his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. Um, he, Peter was just reiterating, because remember he mentioned in 1 Peter about all these dissensions that comes out of the evil desires. So we have to make sure of that, that now as we live for the Lord, we die to ourselves, to our flesh, to our you know, evil desires, so that we may partake of the divine nature. And then, um, here we go. On chapter, on chapter 1, with this first few verses that we talked about, Peter is just showing us 
who we really are in Christ and that how we should be as Christians, how we should grow maturely as Christians. If you look on uh, verses 5, going on to verses verse 9 and 10, he's just talking about, it's so, you know, it's so easy to read it, but if you really want to get into the details of understanding it, because here he says, make every effort to add your faith, to your faith goodness and all that stuff. And it's, you know, when you read it, when you think about it, oh, it sounds easy, but if you really want to dwell into it and really take all of it in, it takes some, for some people, it takes a lifetime to do that. You know, so, he says there, add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love, and it all again gets tied up with love. So, that's how important that is. Sometimes we have you know, all this good quality stuff we could talk about, but then when it comes to the reality of showing that to others, we lose it. Yeah, we speak in tongues, yes, we do intercession, but when it's time to really be hands and be feet to walk out and to work, we lose it. So, anyhow, when, um, for, when Peter was talking about here, this is what we are, this is what we believe, this is how we should be. It's more of a prophetic thing for him to say all this, that who the Christians are, who the followers of, <coughs> of um, Christ is. So, I don't know if you have received a prophetic word, if somebody, sometimes people would go to International House of Prayer to ask for a prophetic word just to ask for, you know, like, a direction of where God wants to lead them sometimes. But here, Peter is giving it to everybody that from who we are now, from who you are now, there's so much more that you could be. Because in his um, first part of his letter, he's just telling us that this is how you should be as a Christian, and this is where God wants to take you. If anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. He's just saying that, do not forget that this is how you should be, verses 5 to verse um, 7. That that's where God wants to take you, that you have to grow in that every day, every day, every day. Not just this week, and then stop next week. Yes, there might be parts of you know our journey or our walk that it could be stagnant, but we don't want to be stagnant. You don't want to plateau. Yes, there will be a time for plateauing, but you don't want to enjoy that plateauing stage because you want to keep going deeper with the Lord. Okay? So, uh, Brother Juan, you want to get into that mm -hmm. prophecy of Scripture, verses 12 to 21? Okay. Prophecy of Scripture. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you, know, you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of, the, of this body, because I know that I will soon put, put it aside, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made, me, has made it clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of His Majesty. For He received honor and glory from God, the Father, when, he, when the voice came to Him from the majestic glory, saying, this is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on that sacred mountain. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, 
and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of the scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Alright, so there you go. So again here, remember on verse 13 when it says, I think it is right to refresh your memory. So he knows that our memories can get rusty sometimes. <coughs> And that's why we keep reading the word, so we get refreshed, we get reminded. And so here, his emphasis is really that growth in Christ. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the contents, the main contents of Second Peter is the knowledge of God at an experiential level. And this is so much different than just by merely hearing the word. The true knowledge of God is to be able to experience Him, to be able to really see His miracle unfold in front of you, that as you pray to Him, as He answers your, your prayers, that as you go walk with Him and He's there with you, that is one big difference from saying that I know God, that just merely saying that I have um, heard of Him. See, knowing Him at an experiential level, I believe, is the one that changes us from the inside. Job, Job made the differentiation between, I have heard of you, now I have, I have seen, seen you. you. Exactly. And when you say, I have seen you, it's not just you see Him, but you experience Him. You yeah. experience Him in your heart. You experience really knowing that He is there, that He is true, that He's not dead, He is alive, and He does things for us. So, those are uh, one of those contents that I just wanted to reiterate. And I believe with that experiential level of knowing God, it takes, a, takes us to the real growth and real maturity in Him, being attached to the vine. Okay? And then, um, what else is there? I wanted to mention on verse 16, it says there, We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because during that time, when Christ has already gone, He's already resurrected, a lot of people, a lot of church people who believe started to lose their passion, started to believe other teachings, some of them even forgot of his return already. And that's why here Peter is just saying, I want you to refresh your memory that he is going to come. We have to be patient for that time of him coming back. I wrote down here that here is a support of letting us know that Peter wants to um, really make it solid for all of those people. Because he's just saying that, I was there, I saw him when he came back, and we heard the voice of glory saying that this is my son, and all this. We, we read that earlier on verses, um, here, on <coughs> verse 17, that Jesus received honor and glory from God the Father, when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, this is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So, I don't know how I would feel if I hear a majestic voice like that, you know, and Jesus is there. I don't know if you would be scared, I don't know if you would be like stunned, but I think that's a pretty amazing um, experience. And that is something that, um, what do you call this, makes an impact, or it made an impact in the life of Peter. And so now, with all that in the back of him, He's able to write all these things, um, how do you say it, in a clear and very passionate and very um, stern manner to really encourage and make, make the people be aware of what it truly is about the Lord Jesus Christ coming. Like he has that stern belief 
that he's going to come back for us. And then um, again, on verses 19 to 21, I think this is a part that is very important because what Peter is trying to say here is that there is no private interpretation. That whatever prophecy of scripture is, it says here, above all you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. Even that prophet who has received the gift from the Lord, the gift of prophecy, cannot interpret anything else without the Lord's leading. That it has to come from a divine source for him to be able to say those interpretations. Otherwise, he's a false teacher, he's a false prophet. And you will know, we will know because if they say something that is not from God, it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. And so, we will know that those people are not truly speaking the word of God, but maybe they are just being led by emotion. Could be. So, okay. So here we see that the main purpose of chapter 1, is to really warn against false prophets.
from here to here that God doesn't have any favorites. He doesn't make any differences. The gospel is for Jew and Gentile alike. And one of the biggest words in my life is perseverance. Mm -hmm. I need, I have to kick myself in an appropriate area to persevere every single day. And I need to do better at brotherly kindness. So this guy I, I identify with, he is now, I think, under, starting to understand how short his life is going to be from this point on. And he's trying to leave a legacy of exhortation that we love and care and we do defend against false teaching and some other things too. Also. And that is why I want you guys to go to your book on the old one. It's page 75. The author calls it the ladder of faith, verses seven, verses five to seven. Yeah. It might be, it might be seventy-seven on your page, on your book. Seventy-seven? No. It might be seventy-seven. No, that's only. That's only. It's about Second Peter, verse one, and uh, chapter one to five. Uh, chapter one, verse five. Okay. Okay. You see it? Just a minute. Just, just, just a sec. Um, the ladder of faith. Yeah. Is what page is that? Eighty-five, please. Oh, eighty-five. Okay. Yes, okay. Please. Let me write that down. Thank you. So I want you guys to just look into that and read that. So page seventy-five on my book, but yours is eighty-five. So there, here, Peter talked about. Faith first, and then he went on to goodness, and then self-control, and there's so many things here, because the author was just talking about, see here, the self-control, the goodness, goodness was highly prized in the Greek moral philosophy. It meant controlling the passions instead of being controlled by them. And sometimes we get controlled by our passions and that's when we go mm -hmm. down the drain. Yeah. You know? Sometimes our passions, they're not that bad, but then when we allow them to control us, that's, that's when it gets us in trouble. Um, a church member just called Ben earlier and said that, you know, her husband is being visited by angels and these angels are telling the husband that it's time to go. And she said, don't, uh, tell them, tell them that you're not ready yet. Tell them that you're not ready to go. <laughs> so, sometimes we have that passion to be with our husband. I don't know what the situation was or how true that is. The, the husband's been in the hospital for quite a while, so, but I believe that the husband is very much in it, you know, she, he's very awake and alert, so if he is being visited by, by angels, and he said that it's white angels, but, you know, but then again, you know that even the evil ones can yeah. tend to be white, so, anyhow, Ben was just saying, if you, if this is from the Lord, then how nice it would be to have a, you know, like a, what they call this? How do you say it? A confirmation. A conf confirmation or a, oh, yeah. yeah, that you are going to go to the Father, <laughs> right? Because you don't know, we don't know when we're going to go, but if somebody's going to come to us assurance. to give us a message, assurance that somebody's going to come to us and give, give us a message that it's time to go to the Father, I'd be like, oh, come on, I'm going now before God changes his mind, right. you know? So anyhow, but I think she has that anxiety, she has that fear of losing him, because she was saying that I cannot live without him. And Ben's just saying that sometimes we have the passion to be with our spouses, but it shouldn't take over the throne of God in our life that we put Amen. them in that throne. So Ben was just telling her that you should release your husband unto the Father, that 
if he takes him away from you, then you will still have God in you and you'll be able to recuperate from whatever adversity it is in life. But then her case is different because I believe that she's still not in that stage where mm -hmm. she has given up everything to the Lord. So it's 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 different, but that's just what I'm getting at. Like there are things in our lives, there are passions in our lives that we allow to control us. And so when we allow those passions to control us, it could take us in a different way. So, a second one, after the pursuit of moral graces, on Roman numeral number two, is Peter's Testament. Just like what we talked about earlier. So these are just the contents of, of uh, or the breakdown of those. So moral pursuit, or pursuit of moral graces, I'm sorry, and then Peter's testament, and then the prophetic scriptures and false teachers, which is the one that uh, Brother Juan has talked about. So it's, it's basically not so much of um, like a twisted content. Peter is just showing us step by step what he wants to um, deal with or what he wants to bring out in the letter. So those are the things. They're pretty much um, clear. So on Roman numeral number two, which is this part, we're here. We're here on this part, remember? So one is, oh, sorry.
Yay. Yay. Yay.